Hej Joachim. Hej. Jeg har invitet dig til at komme og tale om dit monumentale work, Christiania Day for Night. Ja, yeah, sure. I can start with how I encountered Christiania. I grew up in, in the suburbs, so like many um, during the 70s, I would come to Copenhagen and, and hang out at, at Christiania a lot. I would also, of course also walk around there high because it was also a place to, to buy hashes. But not only that, it was an incredible fascinating place. It was a different Christiania than today. Christiania was established in 1971 by, I guess now we would call them activists, who brought down the gates of a dysfunctional military base in the middle of, of Copenhagen. And then people basically moved in, there were flyers and word to word announcement that there was this place that was available. And by some miracle, they were not kicked out, but allowed to stay. And <clears throat> I think there was like one watchman from the military. And that was about it. It's quite big and quite um, messy. And, and that was also what, what characterized this military base, that it was, um, it was very, um, it had many stations and many functions. So, so it's not easily kind of, um, it's not easy to get a, a kind of a, a sense of off the place. There's like many little pockets and, and, and tunnels and, and, uh, and houses and outposts, you know, that are spread over a quite, quite big area. It was probably built to defend Copenhagen against the Swedes. And that's also another thing that's, that's fascinating about it. This history of control, of controlling Copenhagen's border and then controlling also the people on the base. Because at the time when it was a military base, Uh, the officers was not really comfortable, uh, didn't feel comfortable being too close to the soldiers. So there was many sorts of, the, the whole place was in a way built for control, control of the external border and control of, a, of the soldiers, of the people on the base. I think this was really what interested me that, that there was, there was this, these, uh, and they're called the founding fathers because they were all men. I don't know where the women were, But um, they made a decree that, that they would create this community, Christiania, that would allow for the most personal freedom. And besides from just being fascinated uh, by the place, because I was, you know, hanging out there and had some kind of history with it, um, and that probably is why it kind of came back when I started doing art, uh, um, it was this clash of intentions, this place that was ultimately built for control and these people coming in to create a place that would enable people to experience the, most, the, the highest degree of freedom, whatever that means. I think it's pretty unique in how it's organized. Probably also it's, it's very close to like settlers or people who settle somewhere. Maybe it's some kind of anarchy. They had some rules, of course, against hard drugs and no guns and all these things. But it was an anarchy in the sense that the police were not welcome there and they didn't feel that they belonged to the EU and not even Copenhagen, perhaps. At that point, I was very interested in film and I think the idea started to mature what it was that I would document and what I wanted to photograph was how this idea of freedom had materialized right so we can say that all ideas we have to some to some extent they get a material form yeah uh, they, they get an expression they are turned into something and then here we had this military base and this idea of a place that allowed the most freedom and of course you can't really photograph that but you can photograph the traces or the frame or, or in my case what I, I really focused on in the photographs were the alterations the alterations of one architecture the military architecture into the architecture of the free city it's, it's called parasite architecture everything was modified yeah. I was very interested in this sliding between fiction and documentary, but not, not as, a, as something that is put against each other, but something that slide into each other. So a seamless slide that it's both fiction and documentary. I was also very interested in film and I got interested in the, the day for night technique. Uh, it's, it is really featured in Truffaut's film, uh, La Nuit Américaine, The American Night. Uh, and it's a technique where you film 
a night scene during daytime. And of course now it's obsolete, but you would still do it in, in 96, uh, f film that way, uh, often to save money. You see it a lot in westerns, you see uh, one of the really famous scenes that I consulted is, is in Jaws, the, the, the film about the big white shark. And, uh, one of the last scenes also in uh, North by Northwest, I think. Yeah, it's also, also day for night. Yeah. They have a, a, st a kind of a, a, sh a kind of a particular, they're very evocative. I find day for night scenes very evocative. Uh, they're like, it's a kind of a filmic night, an artificial night, but it's also day at the same time. And I think that was what, what really, I really felt was appropriate in, in the context of Christiania, that it was, it would be day and night at the same time. It would not be either day or either night. It would be those two things merge into a kind of a, something that was partly a fiction, partly a documentary. I think in photography, you always look to photograph or show something that you can't see with your eyes in a way, that, that the photography kind of leaves you a bridge to an unseen dimension, something that is, is maybe present, but you don't really, you're not able to, to kind of grasp it. And I think that that was also the part of this technique, you know, to kind of hinge on to this dream of a place that allows freedom and then um, through the day for night technique and then also at the same time documenting these realities that are incredible mundane and everyday which basically have to be do with, with people's needs which are the same usually you know just to have some heating and some maybe some be able to cook something and go to the bathroom and all these things which are so basic uh, so of course that would also be such a huge part of the invention that took place in, in Christiania. In, in that way, Christiania is such a unique experiment in the sense that people would take everything that was present, the remains of, from the military, and then turn these things into things they could use for living, completely turn the function around. But can you tell us about your the first day you went out to Christiania to make the photos, did you just go in the, the gate uh, with the big sign saying no photography and started making your work? I don't remember it as, a, as, I, as if I had many problems. I remember, of course, photographing at Pusher Street, which is the notorious place not to photograph. And people were quite intrigued when I told them it's going to look like night and it's photographed in daytime. And they just left their booths and I could photograph also in Pusher Street, the booth of, of, of uh, the people who sell hashes. I mean, I would photograph with a tripod, so it's not like there was any, anybody would, there was in doubt what, what I was doing. And sometimes people would come up and ask me what I was doing, and I would tell them what I was doing. Um, I also felt that, that the documentation of Christiania had been very polarized, um, that there was this maybe how it appeared in the media and, and how it was sometimes spoken about by politicians, which would be this uh, kind of place of depravacy, of free hashes and hippies uh, living without paying tax and for their electricity. And then the other part that would be so forthcoming, you know, like which would be all about how fantastic Christiania was. So, so I felt that it was, it was kind of interesting for me to be a place that was not either or, you know, that was not incredible, you know, forthcoming because there's also a quite grim side to Christiana and not overly critical either of, of the whole project, kind of open towards it, just open towards seeing what is this, you know, how does it look, how, how does it manifest itself. Also when I was a teenager walking around there, you know, some places would, uh, around the peace arc would always seem so menacing. Uh, other places would seem so strangely loaded. Mm. It was as if um, it was as if all those histories, all those things happening, all those intentions, they were like seeping th out through everything. So, so it felt like the whole atmosphere was charged. And it was and not. It was not because that you were high. <laughs> no, that was actually also very much when I was photographing that I felt this. <laughs> well, maybe the sensitivity comes from being high. Uh, it, the, 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 you asked me before, how was it to, to photograph that? And I was really looking forward to it. I needed a, a sunny day. 
uh, and and I was like I would just scout the weather report and and wait for for the right moment and because and of the technique or because of the technique yeah you need a clear blue sky and sun and every time there was like a stretch with good weather I would really hurry out to Christiania and and walk around and photograph a lot of the places that I went there weren't any people a lot of them are uh, in the early morning so there was no people there but I preferred that the that the narrative was was connected to um, to the place as such uh, and I think people would have kind of stolen the narrative it would be about the people mm -hmm. right it would be about how they looked or how they interacted with the camera and stuff and I I was not really interested in that I was interested in the other story a more ambient story of, of, of this place it's an incredible luxury to have these these moments you know where you just look and look and look at something where you just look and sense and and kind of um, just spend time somewhere um, in that sense I didn't feel very removed I felt kind of completely into it uh, how will you explain the the, um, the impact that, that Christiania has a as a vision or utopia have influenced our society or maybe even inspired our society? It's not about the the hashish market that has sold like cannabis uh, lots of places. Uh, uh, Christiana is in a way a free city. Uh, so it, so it, it, it catches on to a history of, of free cities, of, of uh, pirate states, of, 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 of states that are not nation states, that are completely that have a, a different agenda or a different uh, type of politics. And I think it, it, it in a way, cemented uh, this idea of, of Denmark as very progressive to allow something so different, so obviously in opposition to the rest of society to thrive within the heart of the city. And I really think that had a big impact on the story of Denmark what kind of place is Denmark. And also I think another thing that, that I noticed because I live in the area now is that it hasn't really been developed the same way as the rest of Copenhagen. And, um, and I think that is also something to cherish. There's a sense of sameness that happens everywhere. There's a sense of, of almost the same time or the same intention or the, the, the same kind of economy that just kind of a, squeezes the whole city into a mold where where there's a very very little different very very little diversity and and in that sense Christiania is 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 a is a breathing hole mm. there's a, there's something completely different going on uh, maybe less now than in the, in the, in the 70s and 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 uh, when I photographed because I think that now by now Christiania is really normalized and and becoming more and more a part of, of Copenhagen. There's a lot of space out there and there's a lot of space that isn't really defined. There's this place called the Future Forest uh, and I showed a person this and I said uh, so this is called the Future Forest and, and she said oh yes the Furniture Forest. I immediately saw that because it was filled with, with, with furniture at that point. Uh, so it, it's rare that you have these places where, where things like that happen where there's a place that is not designated in its use and its function and its look because that's what because real estate is so precious now that that is what what people do and the politicians do they want to designate and form and shape everything mm -hmm. and there you have a, a kind of things are not qu a little bit more out of the mold which i as a visual person really really appreciate things are a little bit the the the, the, um, the kind of the juxtapositions, what exist side by side, and that has always been the strength of Christiania. All these kind of different intentions and these different groupings, different kinds of people existing side by side in the same space, so to speak. But do you think that our authorities in Denmark somehow understood the importance of Christiania as a symbol of a tolerant society and a liberal society where people can exist in in, in freedom if they want to? Well, it's, it's a paradox because I think uh, the, the person that was maybe most kind of um, has been uh, extremely important in, in the history of Christiana from the political side is uh, our uh, state minister, Anker Jørgensen. And, and, and he didn't really 
I mean, he, he was working class. I, I, I don't think he had any sympathy for, for the people at Christiania in that respect. I don't think he understood it really, what was going on, but he was just really tolerant. Mm -hmm. and, and that was his, his so to speak, his, his, uh, his virtue. Even though there was a lot of pressure for him, on him to kind of end it or do something or make a kind of a, a sort of clear cut of what is this, he never did that. He was just, um, he just had this kind of attitude of, of um, yeah, let it go on. But really we have had several governments since yeah. 71. What do you think have kept the authorities from closing down this experiment yeah. and uh, making it and selling it? For, for or developing it for, for, for profits. Okay. I think it would have been. I mean, even though there has been so much resistance against Christian, it would have been, on a broad level, an extremely unpopular decision. And I don't. I, I don't think they were, would be able to sell this idea of, of just uh, getting rid of uh, kicking all these people out and then putting, uh, bringing in the, the developers and, and letting them kind of. Uh, built the same kind of houses that we have everywhere else. I, I don't think that it was a sellable uh, as a political idea. I don't think it was really. Uh, Do you think? I think the, the general population would have been against it. I think there would have been riots and, and a lot of kind of uh, protests. Yeah. Yeah. What is the reason there is this tolerance of Christiania that you describe? I, I think it was like a tolerance that that was very much of its time, seventies, uh, eighties, maybe old up. A little bit through the 90s. I think it's different now, but at that point it was just so cemented. It was just such a big part of, uh, of, uh, of. Um, it was so, so to speak established. The politician who wanted to to end it couldn't really do much. But it was simply too established at that point. So I think the tolerance is an old tolerance. It's it's a uh, it's it's a different. It was a different environment than now. So in that sense, it's also a, a kind of a monument to that. A different kind of thinking. A different kind of identity in Denmark to some to, to compared to what we have been uh, unfortunately known for now maybe we should remember to do the titles yes tell us about how you decided these titles the titles are usually um, uh, the original function or, or what it uh, what the building served as before and then the the new name because everything was renamed in Christiana. There's the occult school, the uh, the lotus flower, the dandelion. So there would be these. T my titles are usually uh, or the gunpowder house, the children's, which turns into the children's house. I think. Uh, so 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 um, so my title has these double titles. One is the is the original title, the military title, and the other one is the renaming of that place. Nemoland, for instance, was a, was a place that always uh, fascinated me, and, and uh, I always thought it was because of Captain Nemo uh, from uh, Schulzwein, but uh, it was just a guy whose name was Nemo who started it. So there's a mix of randomness and then, of course, a whole kind of vocabulary that I put into these, uh, these names, yeah. I remember we talked a while ago about some of the anecdotes from Christiania. Yeah. One of them was about a, a brown bear living there. Can you tell us that story? Oh, the bear. The bear. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, the the bear is quite famous, and 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 really, I never saw the bear um, uh, alive, but my partner saw it when it was living at the outskirts of Christiania. It was living in in somebody's kitchen, and you can find, I think, online, you can find images of of where it uh, participates in demonstrations. I think there's a demonstration against nuclear power. Uh, where the bear is on a on a horse carriage, uh, and, it, and it had a stunt where it could drink beer. It loved beer, uh, so it could uh, drink uh, apparently three beers very very fastly. Uh, just pour it down. It probably wasn't really a, a great environment for a bear, uh, and 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 also the p person who had it was was not really kind of tending it well. I think that was probably the biggest problem. I heard there was also at one point two kangaroos out there. Uh, kangaroos? Kangaroos, yeah, but I haven't really been able to have that verified. So it, it speaks of the atmosphere in the 70s, early 80s, you know, when there was a bear and kangaroos. It, it's just a different time where, where more things were, were kind of like possible uh, than, than now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Joachim>. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you so much. Very enlightening <laughs> and interesting you, to talk yeah, to you thank about you this, so, uh, so this great work. Thank you so much. Looking forward to see the work. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it for, for, for a couple of years. So. Good. <laughs>